What is this? <laughs> what do you think this is? Like, why? Win this Vista from Team U? Well, let's see how messy it is. Booting up the ISO, well, that's certainly <laughs> very nice with that created by Benjamin Sampson and, well, poorly color text. And at least choose black as the color, mate. Oh, guys, we're just starting the video and we already get out of context. Choosing to load the installer, my goodness, that name Windows Vista Ultimate Fancy does take up the screen size, which makes the a letter separated from the whole sentence. Moving to the second phase of the setup, uh, how can I comment out this? The XP name was changed to that ridiculously long ass name with the creator's name attached, as if you have to really know who creates this blunder. The name is also shoved up to the background there. Also, in case if you want to send an email to the creator as if anyone is willing to send any. I love that the tasks at the left are green, yellow and red as if, well, you know, <laughs> traffic lights. Finally, it asks me to change the resolution. OBE, ladies and gentlemen, finally. Wait, 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 wait. Pause this one first. Don't tell me that the OBE was made using Windows Movie Maker. Oh, <laughs> I knew it. It was made using Movie Maker. This is a certified high quality Windows version, people. The OBE is well already shoved up with poorly made Vista like appearance. Alright, the boot screen is using Vistas. That's quite interesting actually. Oh no, the log on screen. <laughs> the branding is stretched wide. <laughs> Alright, <clears throat> we are on the desktop. Oh wait, there's a welcome center? I don't believe that you can add welcome center in XP. Or this is just a reconstruction which is more likely as you can see that the text in it feels more pronounced than the rest of the interface like the desktop. It shows the CPU, RAM and the PC name as information like in Vista does. But I wonder how well made this is created. The window is not that flexible as it moves with a strange blocky direction. You can change the profile picture with several selected pictures here. The system information from Vista has been recreated poorly as you can see with the aerial font used in here. And finally, you can move the welcome center text into anywhere around the program, <laughs> even outside the app. What the heck? Some objects in the app correspond to its available action in the OS. Although the Vista Extras and What's New in Vista don't work because God knows why. I mean, why doesn't it spawn XP2 when you open What's New in Vista? I know it's ridiculous, but at least it is useful. Well, at its worst. Office for Microsoft straight up just opens Internet Explorer. Well, no surprise about that. After ages, I can finally enter the desktop. So from the surface, it's mid. Although the icons are changed to vistas like my documents, my computer, and recycle bin. The rest is just, well, eh. Bloatways, another shoved up watermark, <laughs> and the sidebar which looks far from the surface, we'll get back to that later. And the startup cuts off which shows that this is done poorly. And also the clock which feels like it should belong to Longhorn. Okay, enough said. The start menu. <laughs> the icons at the right side which shouldn't exist. Hands up, this feels wrong. Don't take my word. Look at the comparison. Look at that yourself. Come on, this is not closely done properly like Windows Vista. This is XP layout with Vista look put in. Opening Windows Explorer. I think these kind of items are really just similar to previous bootlegs, isn't it? Aside from that, the command bar is done decently, I'll give the credit credit for that one. But considering this can be done with obvious layout tweaks as I feel that this is just a task pane moved to the top. Clicking the view system information brings up yet another version of system information applet. This time is much better with the correct font, the process logo and overall nice look. Links at the left pane are functional. Incredible, although you can maximize it. You cannot. 
doing. Navigating to the C drive, it strangely has its own background. It doesn't apply when you are inside any folder in the C drive, just the root of the C drive. Opening the control panel, it defaults to the classic view and disables category view. The classic view uses tile view mode, which is different from XP's large icons mode that persists until Windows Vista. Icons inside it are mixed up between Windows Vista, XP's, and Unknown's, which are absurd from my point. Looking at some of the applets included in this, such as Adventure for UPX, which I honestly have no idea what this is about, and Services and Devices, which lists out running devices and services. As you might have known before, this bootleg uses a nice recreation of the system properties from Vista that functions and displays closely to the original version. But the original Windows XP version of the applet is still available. But trust me, you don't want to say this version as it's just <laughs> freaking ugly. Well, look at this. Ew. <laughs> right clicking the desktop and there's the power twist section. Right clicking the desktop and there's the power tweak sections. When you hover over the option, there are certain actions such as file extensions toggle, hidden files toggle, CMD prompt, and so on. I think this is a rare good change done inside this. Opening the display properties and boy you got these so many ben by Benjamin Woodmarks. Well, aside from that, we got 17 themes in here. All of them have their distinct differences from one another. Interestingly enough, all desktop backgrounds in the desktop tab has been changed, although the name still persists. We got so many screensavers with this one like Aurora, Bubbles, MGB screensaver, and Ribbons. Moving on to the small change but noticeable, Cursor theme. We got a bunch of them as you can see right here. Focusing on the sidebar slash gadgets now, this seems to be a bit broken, right? Well, nope, you're wrong. These are all gadgets that are available, and these are all of them added to the sidebar. My gosh, not just one, two, or three gadgets that are broken, most of them are really just broken or non-functional. System applications in this bootleg are, well, let's just say, quite weird. Take Calculator as an example, which is actually the plus version. Oh my gosh, we can't get away with the created by Benjamin thing. For the sake of this poor creator, spam, we are Samsoning with this one in a comment. Well, yeah. Anyway, other applications such as Paint and WordPad don't change from their original form. Although Notepad doesn't have any change in itself, while looking at the font lists, you got Calibri and Sugo UI. Sample music? Oh yeah, looking at it, tell if there's anything odd. What is it? Yeah, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony made by Michael Jackson? What the heck? <laughs> By playing it for less than 3 seconds due to YouTube copyright system, the original file metadata describes the song as black and white by, of course, Michael Jackson. Interesting choice, eh? Speaking of choice, we got Vista games in here, rather than XP's. Well, to be fair, upgrading the game to Vista version is already an improvement than the system application which isn't updated or changed. Here is Spider Solitaire, and Shanghai Solitaire, or what I remember from the 7, as Mahjong Titans. Scrolling around the program lists on the start menu, you can see that there's system tools, which includes some interesting tweaks, applications, and tools. CPU speed.reg, which I don't know what it does. Genuine check tool, which checks whether your Windows copy is genuine or not. Well, that's ironic since most bootlegs are pirated. <laughs> Warm door cleaner, which is something to do with the networking. XP anti spy, which manages telemetry system within the OS. And XP light that I also don't know how it works since it requires a product key, and I don't want to do it risking the YouTube channel yet again. 
You already know that. Continue. You already know that this is based on Windows XP. Although the banner has been changed to, well, Vista, it still reported the build number as Windows XP, Service Pack 3 to be precise. As per usual, when we are in bootleg, well, checking out some bloatware such as 7-Zip, which isn't actually a bootleg in my opinion, Adobe Reader, CCleaner, IMG Burn, Internet Download Manager that's cracked, jcreator that I honestly never heard that, but apparently it's a JavaScript IDE, correct me if I'm wrong, Media Player Classic, Power ISR, Undelete Plus, and Winra. As for what's on the desktop, Vista Styler just changes the text on the desktop, Windows Photo Gallery that works when you drag an image into it to view, and 3D Flip Effect that does, well, nothing. You thought that the bloatware is just that? Uh-uh, no no no, we have dedicated CD or DVD just to include more of these brute bloatwares. Software Pack 1, yes, 1, includes Office 2003, Yahoo Messenger 9, Xvid, iTunes. Whoa, 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 this is a supposed 3D flip, right? Well, now that's pretty cool. Arc Photo Studio, Norton Ghost, and also ISO, as if Power ISO isn't enough for you. Those are just Software Pack 1. The Software Pack 2 includes more bloatware. Those are Nera 8, a bootleg media center, a vast antivirus, and <laughs> oh, the VM froze. Even VMware can't handle those many bloatwares. Within this hell of an apocalypse of Windows XP Vista Alloy, I don't think that any bootlegs can even beat this when it comes to messy configuration and faulty setup. If you know any, let me know in the comments down below. It's a shame that the VM locks itself in the middle of installation, because if it doesn't freeze up, then I can just... <laughs>